So how generative AI for images works. It's really important uh, for us to kind of dig a little deeper in, into, into some of the uh, mechanics of this. And I'm going to invite Jeff back on to explain. Great. Thanks, Dan. And I'll, I'll move pretty quickly here so we have time for, for demos. But just reviewing from our session last week, when we talked about language models like ChatGPT and broke down how those work, there were really two stages. There was something we call in machine learning, unsupervised learning, where we trained these models on the internet. We used all the data we could find and we fed that into them to give them their initial training. Then we use something we, we do often with our own human children, which is we did reinforcement learning, where we essentially took the, the an original training that was given to the AI, had it practice outputs, and then we as humans told it what it was doing well and what it was doing poorly to have the machine change its parameters and get better at doing those tasks. That's exactly what we are doing with image models. So things like mid-journey stable diffusion. And just like Dan mentioned, we are getting more on the edge of cutting edge technology. As we do that, it's hard if you're not super technical to be able to understand all these things, that's okay. Over the next few years, these things will become a lot more accessible and easy to use, just like we've seen with ChatGPT. But right now, all you should really know is that these models basically combine a language model so we can understand what you are saying, like a corgi playing a flame throwing trumpet. And it goes through a series of both text models and image models to take that and then produce the output image you see here on the right, which can look very different depending on what that pipeline looks like from a technical perspective. Um, how we train these models. Uh, we essentially took all of this labeled data on the internet of different images, airplanes, cats, trucks, and fed them into these giant machines. And Dan touched on this, I believe in our first session, sometimes we stole copyrighted images and fed them into these machines. So when you're producing content with these machines, you start to see scenarios where in certain cases, in, the, in this right-hand example, the, the model started replicating things it had seen, which was included the Getty Images watermark, which this actually did become an active legal battle. And so when you're using these tools, right now they are creating what is considered new content that is still an active debate happening in our legal system. So you probably will continue to see news articles about people suing each other for rights. We'll talk a little bit about that when we talk about AI for audio and some other use cases. But as of right now, there is no regulation that says this is, this is not something you can do as a practitioner. Um, and then we used reinforcement learning, just like the language models. This to me is, is the most exciting and, and shocking thing here. This red car example is just a basic prompt put into mid-journey, which has existed for about five years. And on the left-hand side is V1, in the middle is V3, in the middle, the right-hand side is V5. The same prompt, red car, we went from something that looks like a four-year-old child, or I guess myself, drew it. Uh, and then we, on the right-hand side, have what is a shockingly photorealistic uh, picture of a car. Um, and so this is happening very quickly and reinforcement learning is what we're doing to train these. There are hundreds and hundreds of AI image tools. You cannot go to Google or YouTube and, and not find something that you might be able to play around with. So you should just know there will continue to be a ton of these. Uh, I assume by the time people are watching this course, there may be five or 10 others that are very popular. Right now, we're going to focus on three that I want to make sure you guys are aware of because you'll hear them a lot. So in the current state of the market, there's essentially three tools. And this is an example from each one of the tools. In this prompt, we essentially said, I won't read this to you, but we essentially asked it for a very detailed kind of complex prompt like Nicole took us through last week and asked it to produce a picture of an older gentleman here that could be from a movie. Midjourney is a tool that is created by a company called Midjourney. So this is the company, and that's an example we're going to look at today and one of the three tools you should be aware of. That is only a paid tool, costs about 15 or 20 bucks a month. The second tool that's very popular right now is Dolly. And this is from the same company that produces ChatGPT. So OpenAI has a second product called Dolly. Now Dolly 2 is the, the version of the product that they provide to users that does image generation. This tool is also a paid tool. It works a little bit different, whereas MidJourney is a subscription. This tool, you buy credits and you can use those credits to produce images. The third really most common tool right now is a piece of software called Stable Diffusion. This is open source. What that means is you can actually download this onto your computer. It takes about 10 gigabytes just to hold all of the information in this model. And it's very technical. So it requires some engineering chops, 
chops to really get this to work. You can use stable diffusion for free through some web interfaces. And this is the only sort of state of the art free image tool that I'm aware of outside of the fact that I think if you go to Bing, Bing has started to incorporate some stable diffusion tools into their search engine as well. Um, so right now, these are the three tools that most people are using. And these yeah, and look amazing. Yeah, the pictures are amazing. Mid, mid journey is about right now, it's about 20 bucks a month. Um, uh, how much is a, a credit for Dali roughly? Do you know? I think I bought a $15 credit and it gives me something like a few hundred images to produce. Yeah. And then stable diffusion is free. The, the, the point is that they're not expensive, but they add up, <laughs> you know, because yeah. if you do chat GPT four for 20 bucks and mid journey for 20 bucks and, uh, and then Jasper for 60 bucks and, and, you know, Canva, it, it can really add up. So yeah. Um, it, unless you have a real use case for it, um, try to use the free tools for playing, uh, because otherwise you're going to spend a lot of money rather than save money, which is the point. Yeah. And if, if there was an option on that pie chart of our survey, if, if anyone's lost money with AI, I'm that guy because I buy every single tool in the world. And it's sort of like my Netflix and Hulu subscriptions. I'm probably paying hundreds of dollars a month for every tool. Not the wisest idea. So here's a warning. These things, you know, this won't make you perfect. So these are the, we saw those amazing pictures of some older gentlemen that looked photorealistic. Here are three pictures that look uh, candidly pretty stupid. Uh, and these are produced by the same pieces of software with an equally complex prompt. So just keep in mind, they won't turn you into a great artist, but they are um, they are at least a good starting place if you're trying to get creative with ideas or if you have the ability or the bandwidth to wrestle them into submission or use other photo editing tools along the way. Yeah, so that's Kermit the Frog against the Dark Skull Wizard. Uh, and the only one that seemed to get Kermit right was Stable Diffusion, uh, but the Dark Skull Wizard, I think, Dali. So maybe if if uh, Stable Diffusion and Dali could like partner, they would pr produce a decent image for us. Yeah, and we and, and I imagine in a year that these things will will be at a point where these types of bugs are, are worked out. Even the idea of hands, which we covered being so complex, some of the newer versions of these tools are starting to nail. So we're on the cutting edge here. If we, we wait a year or two, I bet we'll see some really cool stuff out of these systems. That was fun, Jeff. Thank you for that. Of course.